So first up, as you know, like when we really have to talk about India, there is nothing that is complete without having Ambassador Prasad come and make his introduction. And I would request uh, Dr. Prasad to give his welcome address. Like, in fact, for Dr. Prasad, uh, he's been a career uh, foreign service uh, officer. Uh, he was in the Gulf region before this, but one of the most uh, accomplished uh, people in the, in the foreign services that you will ever meet. Uh, so I think each one of you in this room know about him. Uh, one of the uh, most amazing personalities I've met, uh, and I think this couldn't have happened without him. Uh, so Dr. Prasad, over to you, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, namaskar and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm honored to join uh, this uh, August gathering. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Richard Dasher, uh, Director, U.S. Asia Technology Management Center, Dr. Ramit Kapoor, Chairman of uh, Institute of Competitiveness for putting together this uh, wonderful program and timely event at this uh, prestigious Stanford. It's a daunting task to speak uh, in the presence of stellar practitioners, policy makers, and experts on economy from India and also Silicon Valley. But my job is easy, as it's only welcome remarks. Uh, a warm welcome to uh, Mr. Vivek Debrai, Chairman, Economic Advisory Council to PM. Sir, uh, uh, we were first, uh, we received first lectures in economy from you when we were at Foreign Service Institute in New Delhi when we joined the service. Uh, uh, Mr. Arvind Virmani, member uh, Mr. Nitya, of Niti Aayog, and colleagues from Government of India, Mr. Pawan Sain and Kunal Kumar. Uh, I'm glad to see uh, so many distinguished uh, uh, friends of India uh, uh, with whom I cherish my friendship, friendship here in this valley that breathes innovation. Uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's a timely event as India elevated itself to become fifth largest economy. As the, as the world looks at India to drive slowing global economy with its resilient economic growth, as India's first budget of Amrit Kal, that is 25 years till 2047, was just presented, and as India took over as the chairman of G20 this year. Uh, I'll not, uh, I'll be very economic on the economics uh, uh, as uh, we have the experts from India to talk about, but would like to take the opportunity to convey why India at this juncture. Youngest nation with about 50% below on the age of 30, and this demographic dividend is going likely to uh, go for a few more decades. Fastest growing large economy today, a large human resource pool. We produce about half a million engineers a year. Uh, a market of mammoth size, 1.35 billion aspiring population, and committed political leadership. Uh, there has been continuous and significant improvement in global indices, such as uh, ease of doing business and innovation index in the past few years. India developed into third largest startup ecosystem uh, with fastest turnaround of uh, unicorns, 108. Uh, and during the visit of Honorable Minister of Commerce and Industry to, uh, Commerce and Industry to Silicon Valley, uh, we launched Startup Setu uh, to give an impetus to collaboration of Indian startups with uh, VCs and, VCs and uh, startups in Silicon Valley. I am happy to see in an increasing collaboration in this regard. Uh, besides the startup culture in uh, India, uh, India, it, the startup culture is giving rise uh, to a new breed of entrepreneurs in India. It is no less than a social transformation of the youth. Uh, on manufacturing, happy to mention one example that is of interest here. Uh, the Apple iPhones, uh, which are designed in California, are being produced in India too and likely to expand. Uh, it's not only attributed to a shifting geopolitics, uh, but the recent government policies uh, are attracting high-grade electronics manufacturing. The recent pandemic-induced supply chain disruptions uh, made world realize the dire need for diversifying uh, the multiple, uh, into multiple sources, of, uh, uh, sources in supply chain. Uh, India fits well into uh, this uh, and is being looked at by several players. 
global players. And they say roti, kabda, and makan. I believe now you have to add a chip to it, someone said. Um, I would like to mention that semiconductors, uh, an industry, increasingly becoming critical across the board. Uh, it was a learning for me when I was project director of Passport Seva project, a PPP model uh, project with TCS in India. Uh, as we were setting up a uh, data center, they said, no, you have to find another center down south for disaster recovery center to mitigate any scope of loss of data, etc. But no, a crucial industry like semiconductors, uh, I see uh, you know, um, it's only you know, a concentration of fabs in a couple of locations. Uh, I don't know the industry. I, I think you know, it has posed huge challenges which we all experienced in the recent past. So though India is currently opted by this particular industry uh, for designing and maybe we are likely to graduate into packaging and testing, uh, but no, still we are yet to see the fab centers. Uh, I strongly feel it's right time to explore uh, India for this purpose. The ecosystem already exists in India uh, and India is at a stage where it can provide critical inputs uh, what the industry requires in addition to the productivity linked incentive scheme that has been announced in 2021, uh, about 10 billion US dollars uh, for semiconductor industry. Innovation, technology, and social progress uh, are intertwined. Uh, thanks to technology, expansion of internet, usage of mobile uh, phones for financial transactions, and its quick adaptation in India, now India has one of the largest uh, is the one of the largest digital economies in the world with a digital GDP poised to cross one trillion US dollars by 2025. I just to say, just to mention, there were 2,400 UPI transactions per second last year in India. Um, India US relations have been growing at a faster pace in the recent times. Uh, we have seen. Uh, uh, meetings at the level of uh, leadership, that is uh, Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji and uh, President Biden over 15 times, both virtual and physical, in the last one and a half years. So that shows the intensity of the relations. Uh, the relationship is comprehensive, um, a strategic partnership comprising of security, technology, economic, regional. You all know that we have a quadrilateral group, Quad, that is... Uh, uh, India, USA, Japan, Australia, and I2, U2. Uh, there's also a recent formation, India, Israel, and then UAE, US. Uh, these are all the initi initiatives of US. Indo-Pacific Economic Framework. We had the first meeting of trade ministers in Los, Los Angeles a few months back. Uh, so uh, these are all the me institutional mechanisms which are really intensifying this relationship. Uh, though the US is our large, largest trade partner, the current level of total trade is about 150 uh, billion. Uh, it came down a bit after COVID. Uh, is in no way justifiable if you weigh the complementarities in our economies. A distance is no matter. California, I just because we are sitting here, I thought historic relations with California, India had, and this includes the Gadar movement during our freedom struggle, which was uh, launched from a building in San Francisco. We proudly own that now. And farmers in Central Valley, you ask a pistachio king or walnut king, it is an Indian origin farmer. Uh, and professionals, you know, like doctors and uh, uh, hospitality sector, uh, sometimes you no know, motels are called patels. So CEOs of global corporates, including Microsoft, Google, Adobe, Micron, etc., and new age, new age venture capitalists. So we are all proud of these achievements by Indian community here, and we appreciate their involvement in India's growth story uh, and also their role in strengthening India-U.S. relations. Uh, also, I would like to appreciate and thank bodies such as. US IBC, US ISPF, India Spora, IIT Startups, Thai, uh, and also I'm, I think you know, India Dialogue, I just heard it is going to be you know, an annual feature, their efforts to strengthen this relationship. In conclusion, I would like to refer to the statement by President Biden, very recent one, on Tata Boeing deal. Uh, just to indicate you know, what is in store for this mutually beneficial relationship, Indo-US. The purchase will support over 1 million jobs across 44 states in the US. 
This announcement also reflects US-India economic partnership. Together with PM Modi, I look forward to deepening our partnership even further as we continue to confront shared global challenges, creating more secure and prosperous future for all our citizens. Uh, I'm sure these deliberations of two days on innovation, technology, and development would result in further deepening of uh, this important relationship for global good. Uh, I would like to thank once again Mr. Richard Dasher and Dr. Amit Kapoor for organizing this wonderful event and giving me this opportunity. I hope the tradition will continue. Thank you very much. Jai Hind.